Welcome to a lesson on using a table of values to graph a linear equation in two variables. We'll be following the steps outlined here for graphing linear equations by plotting points. As we go through each step, we'll look at the worked example below, and then afterwards, we'll take a look at our own examples. So step one, we choose two or more values for the input variable, normally x, and list them in a table of values. Notice how it says choose two or more. We only need two points to graph a line, but the third point will serve as a check, so we'll always select three values for the input variable x. A typical table shown below has a column for x, the input, y, the output, and a third column for the ordered pairs. Notice in this case, we've selected negative two, zero, and two for the input values. And in general, it's always good to select zero as well as a negative value and a positive value. Step two, we substitute each input value, or x value, into the equation and compute the corresponding output values, or corresponding y values. Then we list these values in the table. So our equation is y equals x plus one. So notice below, we've substituted negative two into the equation, zero and positive two. So here are the corresponding y values, or corresponding outputs. We record these in the table, which we see here. Step three, write each input-output pair in the table as an ordered pair. The input-output pair is the x-y pair. So looking at the table, notice how here are the ordered pairs, negative two comma negative one, zero comma one, and two comma three. Step four, we plot the ordered pairs, connect them, and extend the line beyond the points to show that the pattern continues. So looking at the coordinate plane, notice how the points have been plotted in red. And notice how they do form a straight line graphed here in blue. This blue line is the graph of our linear equation y equals x plus one. Now let's look at our own example. We want to graph the linear equation y equals three x minus two. The first step is to select the input values or the x values. Let's go ahead and select negative one, zero, and two. Once again, notice how we have a negative value, zero, and a positive value. We don't have to use these values, but these should work well. The only thing to be careful about is when we go to find the corresponding y value, if the y value would not be on the vertical axis, we have to come back and change the input value, or x value, until the corresponding y value would occur on the vertical axis. Otherwise, when we go to plot the point, it would not be on the coordinate plane. So step two, we substitute these values into the linear equation. So for x equals negative one, we'd have y equals three times negative one minus two. That'd be negative three minus two or negative five. When y equals zero, we have y equals three times zero minus two. This would be zero minus two or negative two. And finally, when we have x equals two, we'd have three times two minus two, which would be six minus two or four. We now record these in the table. So we have negative five, negative two, and positive four. Next step, let's write the ordered pairs. So for this first row, we have the ordered pair negative one comma negative five. Second row, we have zero comma negative two. And the third row, we have two comma four. So because we know these ordered pairs satisfy the linear equation, each ordered pair gives us the coordinates of a point that would be on the line. So for the next step, we graph these points on the coordinate plane. So for negative one comma negative five, from the origin, we would go left one unit and down five units to here. For zero comma negative two, this would be the vertical intercept. From the origin, we would just go down two units to here. And then finally we have two comma four. So from the origin, we go right two units and up four units to here. And now we graph a line through the three points. And this is why we always find three points. If we only found two points, we wouldn't catch a mistake but if we find three points, if we can't sketch a line through all three points, we know we made a mistake and we can go back and check our work. So here's the graph for linear equation. Let's look at another example. Here we have y equals two thirds x minus one. And notice here we have a fraction. Whenever we have a fraction times an input variable, we do want to try to select values of x that would eliminate the fraction when determining the value of y. To make sure the fraction is eliminated, we want to pay close attention to the denominator. Notice here we have a denominator of three. 
which means if we select x values or input values that are multiples of three, we can avoid fractions when determining the output value or y value. So the most common multiples of three would be negative three, zero, and positive three. Again, we don't have to select these values for the input variable x, but these would be common values to use. And again, we're selecting multiples of three for the input variable x because we want to avoid fractions when determining the corresponding output value for y. If our denominator was two, we'd select multiples of two for x. If the denominator was five, we'd select multiples of five for x. Now we perform the substitution for x. So when x is negative three, we would have y equals two-thirds times negative three, which I write as negative three over one, and then minus one. Notice we can simplify before multiplying. There's a common factor of three here. It's one, three, and three, and one, three, and three. So here we have two times negative one, that's negative two, minus one. So the corresponding y value is negative three. Next, when x is zero, we have y equals two-thirds times zero minus one, which would be zero minus one or negative one. And then finally we have y equals, when x is three, we have two-thirds times three, or three over one, minus one. And again, we can simplify. It's one, three, and three, and one, three, and three. So we have two times one or two minus one, which equals positive one. So again, notice by selecting multiples of three for the input variable x, we were able to avoid fractions for the y values or corresponding outputs. Let's record the y values. We have negative three, negative one, and one. And therefore, the ordered pairs would be negative three comma negative three, zero comma negative one, and three comma one. Next step, plot the points. So for the ordered pair negative three comma negative three, left three units and down three units. So this is negative three comma negative three. Next, we have a vertical intercept of zero comma negative one, which is here. And then finally, we have the ordered pair of three comma one, so right three up one to here. And notice how these three points do form a line, and therefore this would be the graph of our linear equation. I think we'll stop here for this lesson. We'll look at one more example in part two.